So, for today's tuning session, I think we'll be going over, let's go over sound. Sound is what happens when things make noise. It's a very important part of your movie. The lack of sound, or the presence of some kind of sound effect, voice, people talking in general, is, is really something that can glue your project together. What you really make sure you don't want to do is make your sound way too loud so people can't understand the words I'm saying. The worst thing is happening is have your sound cut out. so well. So let's uh, try to do something that I'm actually good at this time, shall we? How about we just go over just general camera equipment and what we have for Swamp. We have a memory card, we have a Canon T3i, we have a shotgun microphone and mount over your camera to give you a little bit extra boost on the vocals and so the wind doesn't mess with your mic too much. We've got, we've got your main lens with two lens attachments, although I personally wouldn't recommend using them. Um, your, the default Canon lens is the 55 to 18 millimeter lens. On top of the camera, we have tripod. Tripod we have right now is a little is what came with the kit camera, and uh, we're working on replacing it with a bit more of a sturdy, robust tripod. But currently, right now, it will still do the job and get the job done. You can set it up; it keeps your camera steady. So if you're filming yourself, like I am right now, or you can use it to uh, film a group of people moving and keep the camera at least a, a, a modicum of steadiness. So, what can I do with my uh, Canon camera, tripod, and microphone? You can do a surprisingly large amount. With just the kit lens, you have a variety of uh, lenses. You can zoom it all the way into 55 millimeter and get a look closer to what I'm using right now with a 50 millimeter kit lens. Or you can zoom it all the way out and capture a wide frame. So, what can I shoot with my uh, Swamp kit lens? You can pretty much shoot anything, honestly, with just a tripod and a camera and a microphone. You don't really need all that much equipment. You can get really cool shots like this shot from my Insomnia film with just a tripod, honestly. And um, there's some techniques to make those things more stable without having to go through purchasing thousand dollar camera equipment. You can make a lot of stuff, people. You can make, you can make horror movies. Heck, I've made way too many horror movies for someone my age and all I used mostly was T3i or cameras that had the video quality of something akin to sandpaper, but still, you can, you can do it. You can go out and just always, always do something. Always be wanting to do something with the, with the camera. It doesn't have to be the perfect thing. It doesn't have to be exactly what you pictured in your mind's eye. Just keep making stuff and eventually you'll find that you're making better and better films. How do I operate the camera? Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of stuff you can use. So here's a bit, here's a lens. What you can do is you've got multiple controls you want to you want to know how to use. First is your focus. Without this, everything's going to be blurry, or some things are not going to be blurry when you want them to be blurry. Here's your here's your zoom. It's farther back on the lens, and it it it's pretty self-explanatory if anyone knows how zooms work. Okay. Next, you have a switch on the side of the lens, which is autofocus, manual focus. Now, this determines whether this ring here at the top actually works. On autofocus, you press the shutter of the camera and it focuses it for you. This is not as good for filmmaking as you, a lot of times you need to adjust the focus on the fly as you're moving, but it can be used in certain situations where you're having a hard time judging the focus of something because it's sunny and you have an LCD lens or screen. Manual focus is what I tend to use and it's good for keeping track of people moving through a frame or just if you want to do something creative like a rack focus where one thing moves out of focus and another thing moves into focus on the inside the frame. Um, what else do we have? Okay, next we have the shutter on the camera. This is not something you really need to make filmmaking wise, but it is. it can be important for documenting what you're doing, taking pictures, stuff like that. It also will tell you if something's in focus if you hold it down while you're focusing the camera, or at least if it's in approximation of focus. So, what else? You've got, you've got this wheel right here, and this, uh, this is your shutter speed. Shutter speed determines 
how much light, how, how long each frame is exposed for light, how much light is coming into the camera basically in that part of it, on the sensor on inside the camera. So a lower shutter speed means more light is let in over time. It's open for longer, but it will also mean you'll have more motion in your Normally I set shutter speed to 50 for my films and it's a good balance between motion blur, not having too much motion blur and um, you know, not being too dang dark. Um, next you want to hold down this button right here and then push the wheel and then adjust your exposure. This is normally how you want to adjust for brightness. What, what this does is this, uh, this changes how, how much space in the camera lens is open to light. So at a high f-stop, which is what the exposure settings are called, you will be a pinhole of light letting into the camera, which means you can shoot out in the sun. At a very low f-stop, and I think the lowest the one we have in our kit goes 3.5, the lens will be as wide open as it can be and will let in as much light so you can shoot indoors. Like right now, I'm shooting at 1.5, I think, because the only thing is the sun going down in the background to light this shot. The next and third way to control light is your ISO. And I would recommend using this only as a last resort. For the T3i, which does not have the greatest sensor in the world, the higher you go on this setting, the more grain and other crap will be introduced in your image. On a thousand, it will be damn near unviewable and it will just look ugly as sin. On a hundred, it's completely unnoticeable. And I would try to stay below 200 or 200 or below if at all possible. 200 is pretty much unnoticeable also. And where you can tell if this is going on is if you look at the blacks of your image, you'll see how much, you can probably see how much grain is in there. Now, that's not to say you won't always be able to skip out on this. Sometimes you'll just have to boost it because you have no other option. But I'm saying as a last resort, this is what you want to do. Drop your frame, drop your shutter speed, drop your exposure, and then if you have to, go up. Go drop, raise your ISO, let in more light. sludge. If I mentioned coffee was the most important filmmaking tool ever to be invented, it's how you stay awake. Oh, um, we'll be doing a um, more in-depth look at stuff at all the camera equipment and all the other stuff we have and stuff that we will we'll, we put that. We'll be doing a more in-depth look at all the camera equipment and other stuff we have in my uh, workshop that will be coming up soon in the upcoming months before the end of the semester. We'll be going over all the Swamp camera equipment, everything we have, how to use it, tips and tricks. We'll probably go in and shoot something just to give everybody a feel for what to do, kind of like New Member Film School, but a little bit more directed on just learning about the camera and not really making anything narrative. So we'll be doing that. Um, all right, cool. Um, that will be my 10-minute session, and I'll be taking questions down there.